everybody, welcome back to a new video on this channel. And today we look into the alpha version of Nitro version 3, which is just a V plugin now. Here we go. Some of you might have heard it already. Maybe you were at VConf, you've seen the talk of Puya, that's also linked in the description, or you just follow the Nitro GitHub repository and issues and pull requests there. But yes, Nitro 3 comes as just a V plugin. And while it is not available right now in Nuxt at the moment of recording, it will be at some point, right? We're trying to get it in also as, as experimental version before Nuxt version 5 even. Um, we can try it out already with, uh, well, plain Vite and the framework for our choice are not at all. So let's have a look what changed so far, um, what we get, what's new, cool things there. Uh, and once again, disclaimer, this is an alpha build, so things might change until then. Take it uh, with some exploration thoughts in mind and let's jump into application. And for that, we'll just scaffold our application by just running pmpm create nitro dash app here. And we get this wonderful ASCII art of nitro saying, okay, we want to create it. We'll take the folder right here. Then we have the option to use either the full stack template with Vite or just the backend with Nitro CLI, which worked as before. Then we can run it. We say package manager pnpm, and then it will just go ahead and create it. And as soon as everything is created, we see our application here on the right, a very typical Vite project. We have our source, our like main TS file with some JavaScript or app TS, all right, some assets that make sense for the CSS here, for example. We have that Vite config that we are aware of, and here we see, all right, Nitro is just a Vite plugin. So let's have a look, let's uh, run the whole thing, open command line, just running pnpm dev here, and we'll start in Locos 3000. We already see some interesting parts here. We see that server TS is used as the server entry, and we see that index.html is used as the renderer template. So let's jump into the browser and see what the app looks like by default, the scaffolded one, what works, and then we go back to the code. And here we have our fresh Nitro plus Vite application, Locals 3000. It looks very similar to the standard V template. And if we click here, then we see that API call is actually happening. API works is being returned and we get this from Locals 3000 API. Hello. So this is actually the whole thing running with Nitro endpoints. And I mean, so far so good. Now we know that Nitro is there to make our server-side rendering part a bit easier. And that also works now in Vite applications no matter which framework we use, and you can just integrate it. As once again, right now it's still alpha, maybe it's not whenever you're watching, but you can still give it a try already because, I mean, Nitro V2 already worked pretty well. So let's see how it works in our application. Having a look at our console here, we also see that we see these get messages. So we have some kind of request logging and we'll start by investigating where that comes from. And the first point we look into there is the entry point for the server, so server.ts. That's also the default name. And here we see, okay, whenever a fetch happens, then just log the request method and URL. And that's actually all that we have here for the server entry point. So that's everything that will happen whenever an, uh, a request is being triggered. We see that here very well. Also for non-API routes, so also for just rendering the indexed HTML, we see exactly that request being logged. And if you have a closer look at the server entry itself, we see this pattern. Well, if you're a Nitro user, that seems a little strange because we don't have any defined event handler here. We just have export default, an object, and then a fetch request. And on the other hand, this makes a lot of sense because it's in a way just standards. If you think about it another way, then we have this fetch call, which somehow also reminds us of the fetch API. And actually that request here is, if we take a look, that uh, actual request interface from the fetch API there. So the idea is that we really get a typical request that you're known from the fetch API and the response itself should also be type of response that also interacts with the fetch API. So this fully leans into the web standards here. And so also do other projects and servers out there, like for example, Dino or Bun, who also adopted that more request response based flow and uh, we'll see that more and more. And the great example to wrap all of them works in all kind of runtimes is ServeX, also a project from UnJS, link as usual in the video description, where we see the very similar pattern here. And the best part is, as mentioned, it is runtime agnostic, and uh, we're working towards just being in line with these web standards, which is a great thing for interoperability, of course. 
But the best part is that the whole server entry is quite flexible. So we can even say, hey, let's remove all of that here. And we just go with something very simple, which is the define handler from Nitrate 3 or back then define event handler. And we just say we export default that and then we have an event and not the request um, and response flow, which is also fine. And we can say, okay, I don't know, let's just log console log event dot uh, request dot method, for example, and we can log event dot path, which is deprecated. So instead we should use uh, event dot URL, the path name. And then if you want to have the, the queries, we can also add them if you want to. So that would also work. If we now just start up the whole server and then visit a site or just like get refresh for the, the website, we will see here the method get and slash. And if we then set, say, click an API, then we also see here the call to the API. So this is fully flexible. And the fully flexible also mean that you can even say, okay, let's switch out the underlying framework. You can now run Hono, Elysia, Express, Fastify, you name it, your framework of your choice in Nitro itself with minimal overhead. That also means that it won't stop you if you say, okay, I like to use Hono a lot. I need like a specific V plugin for it. You can use Nitro as like a little bridge, so to say, customize the server entry and you're good to go. So this is a huge feature there as well. And if you wonder, wait, where do I actually have the API? We didn't see that. Well, that's in routes slash API, right? So here we have our hello API and that will just return, in this case, text. We can return also an object uh, and in here just message hello world would also be fine. We'll save that, go to the website and click the call and we see message hello world here. And as usual, JSON is returned as we would expect that. So that also works in the good old ways of Nitro. And to end that sneak peek with a fun part is always deployment. So of course with Nitro as a V plugin also comes universal deployment. So we can just build it. We have presets, we have zero config as before with Nitro V2. So we can just build locally, see how that would look like. But of course, what you can also do is running the pnpm build command and then specify our preset with nitro preset equals Netlify, for example. And then we will see here that nitro is using that. So in case you want to build that locally and then upload it, that would be one way to go. Then we see here we get Netlify functions out of the whole thing for the server build and not our classic Node.js based server setup. And well, we get all the good things and even more with nitro as a V plugin. So uh, if you feel like, please try it out, go ahead and add some uh, little backend things to your read applications, uh, give some feedback, uh, raise some issues if there are any, join the Discord and uh, get in touch. And let me know, what do you think about it? Time to use Nitro if you're not using it already by using a meta framework based on it um, or as a separate service. Now you can have it all in one. Drop everything in the comments. Um, other than that, see you around in all the videos or next week as usual. Until then, happy hacking.